I'm now going to ask Shihan to introduce Professor Rohini Parnavitan. Over to you, Shihan. Thanks, Mahendra. Um, thanks also to Dr. Ruan Biswesa for continuing this Zoom lecture series, especially during the pandemic. Um, our speaker today is Professor Emeritus Rohini Parnavitana. And after graduating with the first class in Singhala from the University of Ceylon, Peradeniya, Professor Paranavitana was recruited as a lecturer by the Department of Singhala in the University of Colombo. And she served the University of Colombo for 43 years. And even after retirement, she's working, this time for the Department of Cultural Affairs in the Singhala Dictionary Compilation Institute as editor in chief. So her interest in classical Sinhala literature paved the way for her to read for a postgraduate degree in the University of Colombo. And she was awarded a PhD, a doctorate on her thesis, Sambhavya Singhala Padye Kavyoti, which means imagery in classical Singhala poetry. She has published widely on classical Singhala literature, Singhala language, and folklore. And she has edited classical Singhala texts produced by the Department of Singhala. So relevant to today's lecture, she has edited two war poems, Sita Vaka Hatana and Kustantinu Hatana, and also the well-known Panagiric, Parakumba Sirita which proves her consistent commitment in the advancement of research in classical Sinhala literature. She has also translated and published children's stories, folk tales, short stories, and academic works. So not surprisingly, in 2009, she was awarded the State Literary Award for the best academic translation of the year. I first heard Professor Parnavitana in Paris at a most memorable, unusual conference held at the Gulbenkian Foundation, where she presented a paper on the war poems, Hatan Kavya, which is the topic of her lecture today. So Professor Parnavitana, the Sri Lanka Literary Society thanks you for accepting their invitation and for giving this lecture. And we are eager to hear your vast expertise on Sri Lanka's literary traditions. Thank you everyone for joining this Zoom lecture. And you might want to write down your questions during the lecture in case you forget the historical and cultural facts that are entangled within this literary genre of Hatan Kavya. Mahendra, we are ready to start the lecture now. First of all, I must thank you uh, for organizing this lecture, Hatan Kavya or War Poems. Thank you, Shihan, and also Dr. Mahendra Gonsal Korala. Uh, you have done a great job arranging <laughs> this uh, lecture uh, today. The Hatan Kavya or War Poems is one of the literary genres in Sinhalese literature. Although the history of Sinhalese literature has a long history, which expands more than 2000 years back, there are no traces of war poems until the Portuguese arrived in island of Ceylon at the beginning of the 16th century and entered, the, entered into the political environment and created conflicts with the rulers and the people. It is mentioned in the Sri Lankan historical records that the history of warfare goes back to the time of Vijaya, 5th century BC, and the kings of Sri Lanka who had fought many battles to expel foreign invaders from the island in order to restore peace in the country. The classical Singhala poetic tradition, which was influenced by both Indian poetic tradition and Buddhism did not make way to compose poems entirely based on war. But when they were to describe kings in other poems, they extolled their martial capacity. 
the war poems were composed with the purpose of extolling the virtues of heroic kings and celebrating their victories in the battles they fought. The subject matter of these poems was chosen by the composer himself to emphasize his hero as the central figure. These poems carry very rich information relating to the contemporary history and society. They are not appreciated as poems of high poetical value, but the information contained in them is of great importance. Some of the poets who composed these poems served as soldiers in some of the battles and they recorded their experiences on the battlefield in a very memorable manner. Some poets expressed their disgust, anger, and horror at the war. Apart from extolling the virtues of the kings and celebrating their victories in the battles, the war poems encouraged the local soldiers in the battles by appreciating their activities at war against the European invaders. After the advent of Portuguese, the war poem became a very popular genre in Sinhalese literature in circa 16th century AD. At the arrival of Portuguese, the political situation of Portic kingdom was filled with conflicts among the local rulers. The Portuguese used this political instability as a way of fulfilling their objectives of coming to the East, such as spreading of Catholic faith and acquiring the monopoly of trade in the island. However, they gradually acquired political power of the Kote Kingdom and had many involvements with the local rulers and the people. I will first introduce to you the five uh, war poems I'm going to discuss. Uh, four of them describing the battles fought against the Portuguese and one against the English. The oldest of the Sinhalese war poems, war poems is Sita Vaka Hatana, which is composed during the Sita Vaka period. It extols the virtues and martial capacity of the two kings of Sitavaka, who flourished in the 16th century. The poem contains 1,120 verses narrating the chain of battles which took place in the southwestern lowlands during the 16th century between the kings of Sitavaka versus Vidya Bandara and the Portuguese. Vidya Bandara was the son-in-law of King Bhuvanekabahu of Porte and also the father of Prince Dharmapala. The composer of Sitavaka Hatana was Attanghari Abaya Alahapiruma. As mentioned in the poem, uh, who served as one of the militiamen under Raja Singha, 1581-1593 of Sita Vata. Vadinata naranindu sandhanitn vemine asamin metiyan veta sita medine kalayud melesin mama koi lesine kiyanola sintopi this is a poem from Sitavaka Hatana. It was recited by Mr. Buddhika Gihan Gomas, the member of the teaching staff, University of Visual Arts, Kalambo. Sitavaka Hatana starts its narration in the time of King Dharma Parakram Bahu IX, 1489 to 1513 who reigned in the kingdom of Porte. When the Portuguese arrived at the port of Colombo, those days it was called Colontota. The Portuguese negotiated with the king of Porte about their desire of trading in this island and the king agreed to it. Vijay Babu, 
the sixth, 1513 to 1521, became the king of Kote after the demise of Dharma Parakrama Bahu. When Vijay Bahu proposed to appoint his stepson as the heir to the throne of Kote by excluding his own sons, <clears throat> it created turmoil in the royal family and the sons turned to the kingdom of Kandy for assistance in overcoming the problem. Having obtained assistant, assistance from Kandy, they advanced to the capital court with an army and plundered the treasures of the palace. In the same night, the king was put to death on the orders of his own sons. This uh, assassination is called Vijayba Kolle. Uh, as a result, uh, kingdom of Kote was divided into three parts, namely Kote, Sitavaka, and Raigama. And it was shared by the three brothers, Maya Dunne, 1521 to 1581, the most ambitious of the three, became the ruler of Sitavaka. And he built upon the site a full fledged city with all the necessary buildings, such as palaces, assembly halls, dressing pavilions, hot water baths, arsenals, parking shelter for palanquins, houses for queens, stables for elephants and horses, warehouses, kitchens, etc. Maya Dunne fully hoped to succeed his brother as the king of court. However, Burnikabau considered his grandson to be the heir to the throne. At this juncture, Mayadunne realized that ascending to the throne of Kote would not be easy. Burnikabau also observed that so long as Mayadunne was influenced by his ambitious inspirations, the chances of his grandson, Dharmapala, wearing the crown would be very remote. Therefore, considering the power exercised by the king of Portugal in the east, Bunikabahu decided to place the infant prince under the protection of king of Portugal. After hearing this, Maya Adunne terminated to pay income to the ruler of Kote. Bunikabahu, with the assistance of the Portuguese, proceeded to Sitavaka to control the power of Maya Adunne. On the way to Sitavaka, while staying in a palace at Kalania, the king Bunikabahu was shot dead by a Portuguese soldier. The poet places the complete responsibility on the King Buenekabahu for the vast damage done by the Portuguese to the country. We could assume that it has the attitude of common folk at that time. After the death of King Buenekabahu, Prince Dharmapala proclaimed as the King of Kote. And also he was baptized as Dom Juan Dharmapala. The inhabitants of Kote realized that they were no longer safe under an alien king and having no faith in a king who has embraced Christianity. They fled to Sitavaka. They were welcomed by Maya Dunne to his territory. Then Maya Dunne proclaimed himself as the king of Kote and presented him to the people as the protector of the nation and the defender of the religion. This situation was informed to Goa. An armed fleet was sent to invade Sitavaka. When the Portuguese army came to Sitavaka, Maya Dunne fled to Daraniagama. The Portuguese army looted the city Sitavaka, grabbed all treasures and dispatched to Goa. This is a map of uh, Colombo uh, at that time that uh, 
port, the port and the town at the early days of Portuguese in Sri Lanka. At this time, Vidya Bandara, father of Dharmapala, became a powerful figure in the Kote kingdom. Portuguese viewed, viewed him as a threat to their undisputed control over Dharmapala. And they became active in taking steps to eliminate his powers. He was imprisoned by the Portuguese, but his wife arranged for his escape from prison. This time, Vidya Bandara established his headquarters at a town named Palanda. Now it is named Palinda Nur near, uh, near uh, Kaltar. He considered himself as regent on behalf of his son Dharmapala. This is uh, war in Palanda uh, map actually. Those days there were no map making, but the drawings, this is a drawing. Uh, this was uh, taken from the Bibliotheca Nationale Lisbon. It was the cover page of the Atlas Lisuarte Diablo. This uh, depicts the war with the Sinhalese people and Portuguese people. Vidya Bandara did not recognize Maya Dunni as the legitimate ruler of Korte and tried to acquire Sitavaka. But he was defeated by the Sitavaka army led by Prince Rajasinghe and the chieftains at Walakada. After that at Alutnwara and at Attapitiya. His efforts ended in defeat at the, at, the, at the severe battle fought with the Sitavaka army at Wakale Tota. He was chased from Satpurali to Puttalam. He fled to Kandy and after that to Jaffna where he was considered as an enemy of the Sinhalese people and put to death by the Tamil army in Jaffna. After his death, the Sitavaka emerged as the largest and strongest kingdom on the island. Then Portuguese sent forces to seize Matara, which is a major town in the southern province which was under the king of Sitavaka. Maya Dunne sent a strong force led by Rajas Singh to drive out the Portuguese forces. Sitavaka forces were successful in defeating the Kotyam. Maya Dunne was delighted by the victory and crowned his son Rajas Singh as the king of Sitavaka. After some time, Maya Dunne passed away at the age of 70. Hearing this, the Portuguese forces marched towards Sitavaka, where they were defeated by Raja Singh at the battle at Mullariava. This is the event which concluded Sitavaka Hatana. Next is the Kustantinu Hatana. This poem is a eulogy written for the Portuguese general Constantino the Tsar de Noronha. He was here as the governor in 1618 to 1620 for the first time, and second time 1623 to 1630. Kustantino Hatana describes his bravery in the war waged and won against the Sinhalese leader. Antonio Barreto and against the prince named Maya Dunne. The poet of Kustantin Hatana is not known, but he is evidently a contemporary writer. He was a partisan both of the Portuguese and of the king of Kandy, Senarat, who flourished in Kandy 1604 to 1635, and he was the father of King Raja Singh the second. The poem describes the events in 189 verses. A campaign organized for one single war, which took place at Madhigam. He begins the poem with an adoration 
of the Trinity. The poet does not appear in the poem to be a follower of one religion. After the adoration and introductory verses, it narrates the incidents to explain how Sri Lanka became a province of Portugal after the death of King Rajasinghe the first. Then he relates the arrival of General and his preparations to the war. Then the march of the General Disa from Kalambu to Madhigambur, passing many places in route. At this stage, Disa began a rigorous campaign against Barreto and Maya Dumi. He defeated the rebels and burned their city, Madhigambura, and took some of the leaders as prisoners. The poet praises Constantino the Tsar and condemns Antonio Barreto as an ungrateful person. Next poem I'm going to describe is Parangi Hatan, War of the Portuguese. It's a, it's a collection of 200, 214 panegyric verses composed in praise of Raya Singha the second. This poem is composed mainly to eulogize the king of king for being victorious at the battles of Valavaya and Ganuru. The poem is the best out of the eulogies written to be sung in the presence of the king. The larger part of the poem utilizes poetic imagery to commend the martial and the sexual capabilities of the king. Now, Mr. Buddhika Gyan Gomes will recite the poem from Parangi Hatana. Yamin Kaluganga Ether Vedasita Rupunyan Mang Balav Balava Dilena Rankanga Athat Aragan Viduliya Kmin Lilav Lilava Kelina Kelia Kmlesat Saturan Kapadam Min Irav Irava Wadina Radak Rajasiya Raju Duai Rupu Alelava Elava In this poem, uh, it describes how the people rang uh, in uh, when, when the Rajas, King Rajasinghe came to the place. Oh. Mahatana, the Great War describes the battles between the King Rajasinghe II and the Portuguese. This poem speaks of the defeat of Constantine de Sa and his successors under the hand of the King of Kandy. It is mentioned in the poem that the author is a nobleman named Kirimetiyava. This poem consists of 155 verses and is composed in a similar style to Kustantin Hatan. While Kustantin Hatan praises the captain, General Constantino the Tsar, and this poem describes his defeat and death. The poet relates how these foreign people got a footing by by deceiving the king. After having established themselves firmly in the island, they challenged the kings. The poet narrates the historical background of the events and compelled the Sinhalese king to engage in various battles. He begins the poem by stating his wish to compose a poem in praise of Raja Singha II who was able to defeat and expel the Portuguese enemies from the island. He also describes a chain of battles that occurred after the arrival of the Portuguese. There is an interesting account in this poem 
about the birth of Raja Singha too. When he was born, the astrologers predicted that Raja Singha would be a powerful monarch and that he would rescue the country from the invading enemies. During the time when Raja Singha became the king of Kandy, General Constantine Tsar marched to Kandy with an army of 20,000 soldiers to conquer the kingdom of Kandy. They confronted the Sinhalese army commanded by Raja Singha II at Vallavara, where they were defeated badly. After some time, Constantine the Saha campaigned and advanced through Balana for a further battle, and his forces met the Sinhalese army at Ganova. A fierce battle took place there. The Portuguese were destroyed, and the general Constantine the Saha was murdered. The whole plain of Ganova was like an altar of Humans sacrifice. This is a battle scene uh, against Portuguese. You can see the Portuguese uh, soldiers with their dresses, and these are others are local soldiers. This was taken from Baldius's uh, uh, relations of Ceylon by Baldius. This is a uh, drawing about drawing of Kavikara Madhu. It is recorded that there was a separate assembly of poets which conducted interactive poetry sessions in the royal palaces in Kandy, where the participant poets composed panegyric poems and recited them aloud in the presence of the king, occasionally competing against each other with the objective of entertaining and pleasing the king. Many of them sang eulogies to the king, praising his valor, prowess, and martial capacity by describing the war he fought. This situation paved way for the composition of war poems, apparently in the 16th century. Now, in this uh, assembly, you can see the king seated on the throne and uh, poets are seated in front of him and one poet raising uh, all a manuscript, maybe a poem uh, to the king. They were reciting poems in the assembly, uh, loud. I think uh, maybe they may have musical instrument played also. Next war poem is Raja Singha Hatana. It is the longest of the war poems composed to praise the King Raja Singha II. It gives a full account of the battles he fought and won. It contains 449 verses written in a ballad form, somewhat similar to Sita Hatana. The poet describes the invasion of the Portuguese to Kandy, having raised a fortress at Balana. The king Senarath fled to Mahiangana, where his queen gave birth to a prince. The king consulted the astrologers, who predicted that the prince would become a powerful monarch. As a result of the royal infant's cosmic power, the enemies too fled from Balana without any reason. This was mentioned in this uh, Raja Siha Artana. The poet gives an account of the martial training and education of the prince. When the prince com complete the martial training, his King Senarath crowned the prince Raja Singha as the king of Kandy and bequeathed equal shares among the other sons. For the first time, the young king experienced a severe battle with Portuguese troops at Randeguila and defeated the Portuguese without much effort. After the demise of King Senarath in 1635, 
is again invaded Kandy. Many volunteer warriors from all over the island rallied around Raja Singh to destroy the common enemy. A fierce battle took place at Gunnar. A massacre of the enemy is described in detail in the poem with eulogies to the victorious king. There were no poems appeared for some period of time till we find a war poem written during the reign of Sri Vikrama Raja Singh, 1798 to 1815, the last king of Kandy. Uh, we have the Ingirisi Hatana, the war of the English, describing the campaign of the British against the king of Kandy, in which the Sinhalese king was victorious and, and completely rooted the enemies in 1803. The poem also gives an account of the British in Sri Lanka in the same style as in Mahatana, which gives an account of the Portuguese in Sri Lanka. The British who came to Sri Lanka during the reign of Raja Adi Raja Singh lived in amicable terms, terms with the King of Kandy. But later, moved by folly and greed, they attempted to capture the realm of the Sinhalese king. With this object in mind, the British troops set off from Kalambu to Kandy. Another army set off from Trincomalee. The Sinhalese allowed them to occupy Kandy. When the king sent Migaha Tane to interview the British who were occupying the city of Kandy, they demand half of the king's territory and threatened that they would take the whole country if their demand was not met with. Sri Vikrama, accompanied by his ministers and the army, marched to Kandy and routed the British. <laughs> Karana Siri Mangalam Durana Minneka Viridu Dudanam Sudarna Yutunga Mangalam on Kandy from Batipua under the leadership of a Malay captain. That is also narrated in this poem. The poet says the British forgot the previous beating they suffered and came again to meet with death. The poem is concluded with an invocation and blessings to the king. What uh, Mr. Gomez recited was the uh, blessings to the king. There is another poem, Vadiga Hatana, a story of, of Vadigas. It seems like a war poem. Uh, it was written in contrast from Ingrisi Hatana, where the evil and wicked deeds of the king and the compatriots are described. It has been composed after the king was taken captive by the British as a panegyric for the chieftain Alipola, who was attributed to the heroism of removing the king. Though this poem is named as Hatana, it does not contain any account of a war. There is a large number of panegyrics of Sri Veeraparakram Narendra Singh have been preserved 
the verses of these collections are very much different from the eulogies which refer to the kings as they were there were no incidents of war occurred during the reign they are the erotic sentiment predominates while the heroic sentiment is almost absent the composition of armies these war poems contain a considerable amount of information of the political situation which prevailed during 16th 17th and 18th centuries the singalese forces who were very active in the battlefield were peasants and they were very much dedicated in rescuing the motherland from the enemies they served as part time soldiers mobilized during the war and supported by a simple system of logistics they were expected to maintain themselves in a state of armed readiness when informed by the king they rallied forward with their available weapons though the portuguese and british armed forces were powerful in weapons the local armies were able to weaken them in numerous ways such as through guerrilla attacks both europeans employed the large number of hired local soldiers they are called lascarines the war poems illustrate that they suffered from the desertion of these lascarines several times this is a uh, uh, drawing of a native soldier from the travel journal of spielbergen from 1602 and next one is a lascarine soldier from a mural at hagurang kheta vihare this is a portuguese soldier attacking a local leader a khavi uh, from the samandevale ratnapura the european forces contained a large number of non european troops hired mainly from india which belong to various parts of india and other southeastern countries namely the mentioned in war poems kalinga malays in malacca strait settlements telugu country east of deccan kannadi karnataka southwestern india urumisi a minor kingdom near the mouth of persian gulf kangana konkan low country of western india doluvara the place is unknown padakkara is also the place is unknown patandi the country is unknown uh, khavisi from malaya arabi from arabia ismasi and javaka from java sina from china parasi from persia these names were mentioned in the war poems that their armies consisted of these uh, uh, nationalities this first drawing is a uh, is singalese club fighters from a carving of a ivory comb second one singalese gladiators it's a fresco at ridhi vihare these are all people from singalese armies see how they fought at the um, war the singhalese war poems provide graphic descriptions of some of the battles fought between the two armies occasionally the poets describe the singhalese grabbing portuguese firearms bashing them with their small butts clubbing the enemies to death in certain instances they describe cutting the heads of enemies cutting off the limbs ears and noses on some occasions the poets themselves were involved in the battles as militiamen in the way they could describe the situation relying on their experiences and feelings on their way to the battlefield the troops sang eulogies extolling king's prowess and military expertise playing musical instruments as a technique of keeping morale at a high level and to inspire courageous feelings of the troops 
this is a kalatua pool a portable cannon it is named as kalatua pool because it is used uh, by the foot kal means in tamil foot with the foot they uh, exercise with this next uh, is a uh, gingal guns grasshopper guns they are like grasshopper the shape is like a grasshopper these are all uh, local guns uh, manufactured in sri lanka these are the guns used by uh, sri lankan army the war poems supply a considerable amount of information about wide variety of weapons used in these battles by both parties the singhalese people had their locally manufactured weapons but having involved in struggles with the portuguese firearms and artillery were introduced to the local arsenals too the weapons used by the local armies range from primitive clubs to more modern cannon the rajavaliya the historical narrative written during the 17th century records that the inhabitants of colombo were amazed when portuguese used firearms after landing the island the inhabitants informed this to the king of porto that the noise of their cannon is louder than thunder when it bursts upon the rock gunner they are cannon balls fly more than 4 miles and shatter fortresses of granite this proves that the cannons were not known to this island at the time of the arrival of portuguese the portuguese and the british brought weapons for their countries from their country it is mentioned in the war poems that the portuguese and british brought ship loads of weapons from their countries including guns and guns spears javelins clubs grenade bombs poison bombs swords bows and arrows to strengthen their power ingrisi hatana mentions that the english army when proceeding to acquire the city of candy they were fully equipped with weapons such as pistols many kinds of guns boomerangs swords bows and arrows axes etc the singhalese army used gingal tuapo and they were very familiar with the swords spears clubs and javelins there were many well trained wrestlers in the singhalese army who belonged to the famous traditions of wrestling marwaliya and sudawaliya this is a wood carving from ambake dewal wrestlers this is in a door frame this wood carving and this is a singly soldier that is also from a wood carving of ambake dewal he is having some kind of weapon in his hand and it was carved as if he is going to the Uh, war and uh, in front of the enemy this is the conclusion of my lecture the composers of war poems were not scholars who had a good command of poetic language their purpose was not to entertain the readers by producing aesthetic delight but to report the events and heroic deeds of the participants in battles therefore the contemporary colloquial idiom played a major role in these works as these were composed with the objective to recite in the presence of the king they are characterized by a variety of meters a language full of sound effects most probably used to harmonize with the musical instruments that were used in recitations the sound effects and exaggerations of these poems have all shadowed the aesthetic value of the poems nevertheless they have conveyed valuable information which the poets themselves experienced and also gathered from people with first hand knowledge of the campaign specifically the poems of a place names names of the commanders and the chieftain the roots of the campaigns 
and the strategies adopted by the forces. These poems are of great value for researchers of colonial history of Sri Lanka as they express the local point of view and describe their resistance movement. This is also wood carving from M.K. Devala, uh, 17th century, a Portuguese soldier on a horse. He's going for the war. Thank you so much for listening. Um, thank you, Professor Parnavitana, for feasting us with so many uh, historical facts of the colonial period, which are not talked about much these days, and for particularly looking at the colonial period through a literary lens. So we, we have now about an hour and a quarter for questions.